Welcome to part two of this family money saving series. When a child is coming into your home, whether it's through birth or through adoption, there's plenty of ways you can prepare for it financially. And of course, if you already have children in your home, there are plenty of ways to set yourself up for success financially. Specifically, we're talking about five things you need to do to prepare financially for your child. Please subscribe to stay tuned in this series as well as for more videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world, we publish a new video every week. First, when it comes to saving money in general, we have to talk about one of the biggest components of that, limiting expenses versus earning more money. If you want to live a financially stable life, you're either going to have to limit your expenses or you're going to have to earn more money. Ideally, you would do both. Limiting expenses is almost always the best way to achieve financial stability sooner because it's something you can control right now. And often, the more you decrease your expenses, the more other expenses decrease. For example, if you buy a smaller home, your utility bill decreases and you have less room for stuff so you can't buy as much. And in the same realm, a five-year-old Honda Civic costs a lot less to maintain than a brand new Mercedes. And a five-year-old Honda Civic costs a lot less than a brand new Mercedes. And this applies directly to parenting and to the cost of a child. Once your expenses are cut down, then you can focus on making more money, but there's no reason to keep increasing your income and decreasing your family time, which is often those two things go hand in hand whenever you can just start by decreasing your expenses. So here are some quick ways for you to prepare financially for a child. Number one, emergency funds. While emergency funds are necessary for everyone, even single people, they're even more necessary when you have a family and the larger your family is, the more necessary they are. If you already have an emergency fund and you have a child coming into your home, definitely consider increasing that emergency fund. You're probably gonna need more. The old adage used to always be three to six months of living expenses is an emergency fund. But since COVID hit, we've really realized that six months is almost the minimum you need for an emergency fund. When COVID first hit, we all realized that we needed more emergency fund than we thought we did. And an important thing I like to point out, when it comes to your emergency fund, think of a bare bones budget. If you're spending $5,000 a month on expenses right now, and there was a massive emergency that you lost your job or, or something serious happened, you're not gonna keep spending the way you're spending. So calculate how much it would cost you just to live. So no entertainment, no eating out, nothing like that. Just basic groceries, fuel, things that you have to have. Have, figure out how much that would cost every month and multiply that by six. Don't multiply your current income level by six because if for nothing else, you don't need that much money sitting in an interest-free or a very low interest savings account whenever you could be investing it, but you do need that six months. You never know when medical emergencies are gonna happen or unexpected medical costs like braces or glasses. You also never know when other emergencies are gonna happen like your child busting a window out with a baseball or breaking the neighbor's car in some way, things that happen to kids all the time. As I always say, be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. Number two, anticipate costs. While a child doesn't have to cost a fortune, it will cost more than not having a child. You shouldn't be blindsided that you have to pay for things like healthcare or childcare if that's necessary for you. Plan for all these costs ahead of time. You'll also have additional costs like small things such as the birth certificate registration fees whenever your child is born or the school registration costs, paying for extracurricular activities, things that you might not think about when you're doing your budget monthly. So plan for that too. Number three, update the important stuff. Don't forget to add your child to anything you want him or her to be a part of. For example, if you want them to be a life insurance beneficiary, you need to change your life insurance plan. If you want them on your will, you need to change your will. If you don't have a will, you need to get a will because you now have a child or you have one on the way. Number four, decide on college. Yes, this is a decision that you should make ideally before your child is born. This is how much are you going to help him or her pay for college? Are you responsible for paying your child's entire way through college? Absolutely not, but you have to figure out what your responsibility level is, and it's different for everybody. You may want to pay for their entire college. You may want to pay for none of it. You may want to just give them a boost without paying for all of it, but you should figure that out as quickly as possible. I'm not gonna go into all the details on getting a debt-free degree because I did an entire video on that, so I'll put a link to that, but it is important to plan for it. I opened my youngest child's college savings account. We had a 529 plan for him, and I opened it the same month he was born, and he was born on the 30th, if that tells you anything. 
Number five, don't go buy crazy. Don't start buying everything you think you need before your child even gets here. There's a good chance you're gonna have a baby shower or if you're adopting, you're gonna have an adoption party, which if you are adopting and you're not gonna have an adoption party, I would highly recommend having an adoption party regardless of the age of the child. As someone who has adopted, I can tell you it is something to be celebrated. And then when it comes to buying things, think used, especially for the big stuff like strollers and cribs and all that kind of stuff. Sure, there are some things that you might want to buy brand new, like a car seat because of expiration dates or you don't know if it's been in an accident or not. But even with that stuff, you can get creative. Talk to people you know. If you know someone who bought a car seat new and it's not expired, they may be willing to give it to you if they're not using it anymore. So get creative. Start budgeting for your child now. Start planning out everything you need. Don't go buy crazy and buying everything that you think you might need. Wait and see what you get and then wait and see what you actually need. Otherwise, you're going to end up with three baby wipe warmers and two bottle warmers that you don't use at all. And there are plenty of other things that are great in theory that you might not use at all. A changing table, for example, is a great idea and you may want to use it, you may use one now, or you may use the bed like we ended up doing and never using your changing table that's set in the corner taking up space for years. Stay tuned for the next video in this series where we're really getting into the specific areas and how to save money in those areas. In the next video, we're going to be talking about how to save money on housing. Subscribe so you can stay up to date on this series, as well as our other videos on money, minimalism, and our travel journey around the world. If you want to keep getting a head start, go ahead and check out my book, Intentional Children everything you need to know about kids on money and mindset. I'll put a link in the description below. That is all for today. I will see you next week.